Now moving on towards our panel discussion. And it is going to be about regulations play a crucial role in shaping the Indian commercial vehicle and road transport sector. They impact the industry in several ways, including safety standards, emissions, and fuel efficiency. To discuss this topic, we have a panel of regulatory experts. Let me please invite on stage Mr. Bal Malkit Singh, past president and chairman, core committee, AIMTC. A big round of applause for Mr. Bal Malkit Singh. Also, I'm inviting Mr. Abhishek Gupta, General Secretary, All India Transporters Welfare Association. A round of applause for Mr. Abhishek. Also, I would like to invite Mr. Jasveer Singh, CEO, Instant Transport Solutions Private Limited. A round of applause for Mr. Jasveer Singh. To join him, I'm inviting Mr. C.S. Vigneshwar, Vice President, FADA. A big round of applause for Mr. C.S. Also, I'm inviting Mr. S. N. Dhole, Head Safety and Homogulation Certification, CIRT. A big round of applause for Mr. Dhole. Also, I would be requesting Ms. Harinder Pal Kaur, Head of Logistics in Northern Cargo Services, GIS Group, to join us. The moderator for this session will be Mr. Girish Mirchandani, owner of Trans Topics. A huge round of applause for Mr. Girish Mirchandani. Hello, Chick. Uh, good afternoon, friends. Welcome to CVF. And I probably have one of the most difficult panels for the day. For the simple reason, one is we are post lunch, so half of you guys must be drowsy. And secondly, we are going to be talking about a subject that doesn't exist at all. So before I set the tone, let me quickly ask a question to Malki Ji. Malki Ji, what does it take to start a transport company? Is something required? <clears throat> First of all, I would like to thank Commercial Vehicle Forum for inviting me for this session as a panelist and honor to please that I am being panelist for all the edition till date held by the Commercial Vehicle Forum. So the question you ask me, shall I brief be, shall I elaborate? Give me a two word answer. A two word answer will be too short. Three words. <laughs> I will give in a one word, nothing is required. Awesome. Let me just cross check this fact with Abhishek. Abhishek. You've been in the transport industry for long. Is something required to start a transport company? Nothing at all. So friends, as we can clearly see, we're not talking about regulations here. It takes nothing to start a transport company. And if any one of you sitting in this room wants to start a transport company, you can do so in the next two minutes. All you need is a phone, and you need to print a built book, what they call it. So. Uh, Friends, road transport industry has been very typical. In the morning session also, we spoke about the challenges on road. There are no regulations required to start a transport company, but when it comes to running a transport company, it is one hell of a job. So let me get in Abhishek quickly first. Abhishek, what would be the typical regulations that are required while running a transport company? Uh, uh, so regulations as such, for a trans if I break it down, it's multidimensional. Uh, if you see the regulations, actually start with the truck owner. Most of the regulations apply to a truck owner because he's running the truck physically between states, complying with most of the laws. But a transport company per se, the, ro the uh, regulations that drive them are basically the Carriage by Road Act, uh, which, as you started off, didn't have too many regulations to start. Uh, but there are compliances such as when you move the goods, you need documentation, you need e-waybill compliances, you need uh, document uh, validations of the vehicle documents which needs to be checked. So those are the primary uh, regulations which drive uh, the transportation segment and the truck segment. I think another layer on other dimension is that the manufacturers of commercial vehicles is also an angle which impacts the transporters significantly. If you see the jump from BS4 to BS6, Suddenly, the regulation changed. We're talking now about alternate fuels. We're talking about other uh, aspects. So these have an impact indirectly on the transporter because cost of asset goes up or the return time gets exhausted. 
I think that is how the how it impacts the transporter. Since you spoke about the shift from BS4 to BS6, let me get Vignesh in quick, quickly here. Vignesh, as dealers, how tough was it to go through this transition and what kind of training went into this? Because dealerships had to suddenly, you know, deal with BS4, then BS6 trucks. Now BS6 OBD2. So what kind of training went in there? The OEMs were quite supportive in most cases. In most cases, in terms of training our frontline sales officers, our technicians, warranty, parts. A lot of training has gone into it and quite a few of them did it quite early. I wish all of them did it early because sometimes it, it was a little bit delayed. Um, another thing also which went into it was also exhausting old stocks of, of spare parts and uh, uh, vehicles. It happened in most of the cases, but some cases uh, it compounded because we had the last week of lockdown which happened and then went into a BS6, BS4, we went to the courts and the courts were favorable to us to a large extent. But uh, overall, I think the OEMs were very supportive of uh, the transition. Uh, so also in BS6, uh, uh, the OBD2, a lot of manufacturers actually worked on the issues which happened in BS4 transition. And they really worked on in terms of uh, technical availability of parts, also in terms of training, equipping us better with the OBD2 tools. I think uh, the OEMs did a splendid job in the OBD2 transition. They could have done a slightly better job in the BS6 transition. But as dealers, are you always cautious that these government regulation changes put you on a back foot, especially in terms of stocks? Uh, see, overall regulations are good because it gives the whole industry, whether spare parts suppliers, transporters, customers in general, the dealers, OEMs, all of a good direction to head towards. But the only thing is, it cannot be knee-jerk. There has to be kind of a roadmap where all of us actually align ourselves to the to the goal. And as a dealer, it also helps in me uh, or our industry confirming to regulations because it also is a social cost. It's a social concern. So it's one way where we're contributing. We're happy doing it, but we just probably need to have a runway. Uh, uh, we can't just jump off the cliff. Let me get in Jasveer here, since Jasveer heads a transport company which has a fleet of almost 1,500 trucks. He's one of the largest transporters in India currently. Uh, Jasveer, what kind of documentation is required when you're moving goods from, let's say, point A to point B? How much goes behind the scenes? Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, so, uh, where you start a trip, basically, you need a consignment note. You need a, a you know, a e -way bill, invoices. Even, uh, you know, today it can be digitized also. You can have an uh, e-way bill and uh, e-invoices in the form of uh, digital. But basically to move goods from one place to, you know, another place, in an FTL moment, you need a consignment note. You need a trip sheet that is a uh, trucker document. And then uh, the invoices and the, uh, that, uh, basically, e-way bills. And if you are moving, uh, you know, part load consignment, then there's a document called, which is manifest, that is a basically consolidation of the, all uh, the uh, shipments you are carrying. So friends, while we have the documentations in place, the checks on the highways for transporters is very, very strict. So randomly, trucks are pulled up, and when we talk of, you know, delays on the road, one of the reasons is that these trucks are being stopped checked for documents, even though things are available online. Let me get in Malki ji here. Malki ji, what kind of issues are the truckers facing on the highways, and what is AIMTC or you doing to address these issues? Before answering your question, first of all, we should understand what is the road transport sector. General perception is that uh, there is a transporter, there is a broker, there is the trucker. But I will start from the reverse as we are uh, talking about the regulations. And uh, small road transport operator is 85% are the small road transport operators, which are uh, running the supply chain. Jo read ki haddi hai wo hai. Jo COVID mein bhi hum log gharpe baithe te, unho ne anu suchit kiya ki 130 crore bharti koi bhi bukha nisho hai. So their importance cannot be neglected. So I will start from them, then to the broker, then to the booking agent or transporter. So as far as the small road transport operator is concerned, he is abiding by all the regulation in place. He starts with a business of one, two trucks, go to the NBFC, comply all the documentation in way of Aadhaar or PAN card, 
then pay or purchasing a vehicle from an authorized dealer and paying all the duties, legal duties, going to the RTOs, getting registered, paying all the taxes, maybe road taxes, national permit, and that after paying insurance, his vehicle is on the road. So in between, he goes to the broker. Nowadays, because today we are uh, discussing, and it is very needed, that brokers are taking the undue advantage between the transporter and the truckers. Recently, I had the example, my friend is traveling to USA, and the, how the broker has been blackmailing them. He has taken the advance balance rate from the booking agent and not giving to the truckers. So we have to educate ourselves. We have to deal with the authorized brokers, good broker with reliability, and uh, then come the transport agent. Similarly, the small road transport operator then become the fleet owner, then it becomes the booking agent. So as per as for transporter, you need one table, chair, built book, or a phone. Or broker ke liye So small road transport operator is complying with all the regulation. But for transporter, for booking agent, or for the broker, there is no such regulation. So now the need of our is that there should be a regulation for the transport operator and for the brokers also. Now, Abhishek rightly stated that uh, some companies, it is mandatory to be registered under the Carriage by Road Act. And the transporter comply all the regulation when it's demanded by the corporate or PSUs. That you should be registered under the Carriage by Road Act, you should be IBI approved, provident fund barte hai ke nahi, ye sab hoga to wo karega. Otherwise, nothing is needed. So now, the question is that, there is a lot of bottlenecks on the highways. As we are talking about the technology, every person sitting here also on the Vahan, e-portal, Sarthi, can put any vehicle number and get all the information in regard to that vehicle. So why our vehicles are being stopped and route? And how much losses we are incurring? How badly the economy has been affected. Toll, we are not against the toll, but the methodology of the toll collection should be immediately, should be, uh, have some different methodology. You have been writing in your uh, article also that uh, Nitin Gadkari will be here shortly. He himself stated in the parliament that 1,78,000 crore is the annual wastage in way of the time consumed and the fuel wastage on the toll laka and the check post. The transport industry was very optimistic that after national logistic policy, all the check post will be abolished. We have been pursuing with the MORTH. MORTH has been uh, sending the advisory to the state government, but some state government are not adhering to the advisories, suggestions sent by the government of India due to the federal system. Even, since, since even the double the engine post. government, like Madhya Pradesh, where the four advisory has been sent, we have the numerous meeting with their transport minister, Shivraj Chauhan, but still they're stating that we will have the report. But why it is happening and, and route checking, Safe Life Foundation is a Pune based uh, foundation working for the road safety on uh, Pune Expressway. Latest study report is stating that 48,000 crore is the bribes paid by the truckers on roads. Since you spoke about the check posts and the problems on roads, friends, we have a very interesting personality with us, Harinda Kaur. You know, traveling on highways is not easy. We have seen the lives of drivers. We keep writing about it. Harinda is one such person who's actually taken multiple journeys in trucks. In on a truck, mein ja ke, drivers ke saath ja ke, dhabo pe reh kar, unse ki hai. Harinder, how was your experience and what were your learnings from there? See, uh, uh, Garish Ji, for me, the department was very new. Uh, like, in 2018-19, I joined this year. So, initially, I was facing some problems with drivers. So, what was it for me? If you deal with drivers, then the uh, road infrastructure is our base for us to uh, supply on the road. So I uh, decided that I would go with them. So 
I noticed कि कुछ problems I I want to analyze के कुछ मेरे लिए मतलब I want to check some पैरामीटर्स uh, कुछ मैंने देखे कि कुछ कंट्रोलेबल पैरामीटर्स थे एंड कुछ वेरिएबल सो वेरिएबल में क्या था कि जो ड्राइवर्स हैं लॉन्ग हॉलेज वाले uh, तो उनके लिए क्या था कि वो लॉन्ग आवर्स जर्नी करते हैं एट टू टेन आवर्स एक दिन में गाड़ी चलाते हैं सो so, उनके लिए एक मेंटल फैटिक तो होता ही है देर इज़ नो फैसिलिटी अवेलेबल फॉर द ड्राइवर्स ऑन द रोड्स नो सेफ पार्किंग स्पेसिस फॉर दैम कोई खाने की अच्छी हाइजीनिक जगह नहीं है नो रेस्ट एरियाज वॉशरूम भी अवेलेबल नहीं है सो so, मैंने देखा कि वो ड्राइवर्स को जब भी मैं कॉल करती थी तो उनको लगता था कि वो मैडम के मतलब एक मैडम है जो एसी सी में बैठती है और ऑर्डर करती है तो मैंने जब उनके साथ गई तो ऑफ कोर्स वो लोग दे फील मोटिवेटेड तो जब उन्होंने देखा कि इफ शी कैन सस्टेन एंड शी कैन सिट फॉर इन अ ट्रक फॉर टेन आवर्स 12 hours and 16 hours and four, five days, eight days. So, मेरे लिए तो बोलूँगी कि of course the problem was that uh, police was very rude, RTOs. Of course the paper checking time and again they. मैंने पहले भी यही बात बोला है कि RTO आपको force करते हैं for the bribes. मतलब uh, don't take it otherwise. मैंने तो मैंने देखा है ये चीजें. Uh, लाइक like, कोई फैसिलिटीज़ तो नहीं है जैसे अभिषेक एंड बल सर हमेशा बोलते हैं कि हम लोग इतने टैक्सीज पे करते हैं अभी रोड टैक्सीज भी बढ़ा दिए गए हैं टोल टैक्स फॉर फर्स्ट ऑफ अप्रैल सो इतने सारे टैक्सीज देने के बाद भी देर इज़ नो एम्यूनिटीज एंड नो फैसिलिटीज़ फॉर द ड्राइवर्स टिल नाउ एंड द गवर्नमेंट ऑलवेज टॉकिंग अबाउट द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पी एम गति शक्ति आई वॉज दे फोर टेन डेज फॉर ट्रेनिंग दे लाइक वो बताना चाहते थे कि पी एम गति शक्ति में वो लोग क्या लाना चाहते हैं बट मैंने नोटिस किया कि गवर्नमेंट ओनली फोकस इज ऑनली ऑन द रोड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बट वो बाकी आस्पेक्ट के ऊपर हाथ ही नहीं लगा रहे हैं कि ड्राइवर्स के लिए दे आर द बैक बोन फॉर आर इंडस्ट्री सो बट उनके लिए कोई बात ही नहीं करना चाहता और पीएम गति शक्ति में सब चीजें हैं और ये सब चीजें ड्राइवर्स के लिए कुछ भी नहीं है फ्रेंड्स इट इज एक्चुअली वेरी यू नो सरप्राइजिंग टू नो मोस्ट ऑफ यू वुड नॉट रियलाइज दैट अ ट्रक ड्राइवर टच इज योर लाइफ एवरी सिंगल डे सो राइट फ्रॉम द टूथब्रश यू पिकअप इन द मॉर्निंग टू योर कप ऑफ टी टू द डेजर्ट यू हैव एट नाइट वॉट एवर यू टच एंड फील इज बॉट टू यू बाय अ ट्रक एट सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ऑल दी अदर एंड वी आर क्लियरली सींग दैट द ड्राइवर इज गेटिंग नथिंग on the highways but there is something interesting that is happening for truck drivers on the safety front and i would like to get in shekhar here shekhar if you can throw some light on what kind of safety features are being introduced in trucks and buses that makes the driver as well as the passengers and cargo safer so good afternoon everybody and i think uh, driver is a key person in uh, transport sector and we do agree that it was a neglected person in the transport sector it is uh, taken as a granted the driver will uh, survive in any condition so if the comfort is given he will sleep that's a common understanding and uh, i think uh, just like uh, to start with again if you uh, start respecting the driver the accident percent will come by at least 10% and uh, taking into consideration the driver needs we have modified the many codes just like truck code bus code even uh, car also when we say be car uh, owner can be a driver or driver can be a uh, driving a car so what are the needs of the driver so uh, right from the climbing uh, uh, in the truck or a bus then the driver work area because driver is the first person to know about the health of the vehicle so the dashboard and uh, see there is a education and other thing we just uh, uh, say that eight pass and 10 pass but he should not be color blind so he should understand what are the features or the road signs on the uh, road even the driver dashboard now there are more than 64 symbols are there so considering it's a intimation to the driver and i think many uh, you can see the driver sitting positions again because the driver height is not specified in cmbr so then we have to adjust the seat either uh, forward backward or upward or downwards and the heel point so considering the different uh, driver uh, i think uh, postures the driver work area is defined the again uh, the amenities which are provided to the drivers just like now we are making uh, even i think honorable gadkari sir has uh, initiated 
all the truck cabin should be AC because the at least comfort should be given to the driver. But I think there was a huge debate on that and finally it came to that the ventilation should be provided to the driver. Because practically when we have seen in the summer season, especially in Rajasthan, the driver tem uh, cabin temperature goes to 53 degree. So in that condition, we are expecting the driver to drive the vehicle safely. So it is just not possible. So I think uh, new regulations are coming. And secondly, just like uh, uh, I think uh, Sir has said, the uh, vehicle and the, again, enforcement authorities. Unfortunately, the vehicles are taken as a revenue department instead of safety and I can say the uh, comfort of the passengers. First is the safety, but unfortunately it is taken as a revenue department. That's why the many stoppages are there in the in between. And again, again the blame will come on the road uh, uh, transporters also. The overloading again, because some of the uh, features which are added as axle load. Previously it was uh, 6 tons, now it is 7 ton and then 16.5 uh, to uh, you can say 18.5 tons. So overloading is a tendency. Even though if you uh, provide some uh, more load to be allowed in the vehicle, but still it's a tendency and it is, uh, I think, observed on the toll nakas where the your uh, vehicle uh, weight is measured. So I think uh, regulatory part and even uh, MOT is also aware of it. So considering all the factors, slowly it's a, uh, you can say, phase-wise manner. Uh, some of the features are added, some uh, rules are made stringent. So I think it will give an answer to the safety of the passenger, including driver. Thank you. So well, friends, while we're looking at the safety aspect, it is one thing that still doesn't go off the highway is that trucks are stopped, the driver is pulled out, the driver is probably abused, slapped, for various reasons. Abhishek, if you can throw some light on what are the issues typically with GST-related things and e-wables, because you're seeing uh, huge penalties, like, you know, 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs. A transporter gets a freight of, let's say, about 40, 50,000 rupees, and he starts with a penalty of 40 lakh rupees. Yeah, so, uh, very right, uh, Girish. Uh, so, the penalties that are applicable in any failure of e-wable, so, uh, just for everybody's understanding, e-wable is the electronic vehicle which you need to generate and give to a truck driver before he commences his journey uh, from any one place to the other. The e vehicle has a validity period which is quite uh, unique to India. The government actually wants the truck to run 200 kilometers a day irrespective of whatever mode of transport he does, whether it's a hub and spoke, whether material are lying in a warehouse. The document keeps, uh, you know, going closer to its expiry. So the truck driver is always in pressure that I have to reach the destination within that given time frame. So on some aspects when you talk about safety, mentally he's also under pressure to keep up with that paper requirement, which is actually immaterial because material is tax paid, there is a document with it. Why pressurize the driver to uh, run in that time frame? Now the best part is if that document expires, the penalty is 200% of the tax on the goods. So while the freight may be 2% of the value of goods, the penalty can be anywhere up to f say 56% uh, or you know even more than that depending on what tax material bracket he's carrying. So the values go completely berserk. There's always a uh, debate between the transporter and the customer that whose onus is it? Why did the document fail? I'm sure many people here who ship goods have had experiences of evable failures. These are basically errors. They're not evasion. Unfortunately, the government is penalizing these errors rather than chasing these evasions. And that's what is, you know, burdening the transport sector in terms of free flow of goods. Malki ji, are these issues being taken up with the government and what has been the response so far? Def definitely all the issues has been uh, regularly, day-to-day -day basis has been uh, highlighted to the government. And as such, uh, they are also well aware. But uh, some will is required to get it done. Regulation will uh, not bring any relief to the operator. It should be in way of the ordinance. Triple talaq karna the ordinance aa gaya. Kashmir ka article 140 ordinance aa gaya. Delhi mein Supreme Court ne, Supreme, in spite of Supreme Court judgment, there was the next day the ordinance. Now, the center is passing back to the state government and state is 
government is passing back to the central government. Before bringing any regulations, the infrastructure should be ready. Every vehicle on from 1st of April 2023, every vehicle was supposed to be have its fitness certificate on the automatic fitness centers. And surprisingly, in Maharashtra, there is only one fitness center. So as a proactive measure, we coordinated with the government, with our state government, and immediately get it rectified, get it extended before there is any choice. Now you can see scrapping policy. I was in Pune last month. There is a not, not a single authorized scrapping center in Maharashtra. So how the vehicle will get scrapped? So there are uh, different interpretation of the directive suggestions by the state government. For example, there is uh, one rule ki gaadi mein cleaner chahiye. Maharashtra is heavily enforcing it, heavily penalizing our uh, truckers in way of the EV chalans. We have taken up the matter with the state government, and definitely the amendment to the rule is put in. Now the file is with the law and judiciary department. So it will get rectified, but it is a delay, delayed process. In principle, they agreed. Now the e chalan is there. We were the industry that there should be no human interference. But it has been misused. Technology should penalize the truckers and our suggestion was that in the very next spot you recover the fine so that driver will get educated what offense he has done and owner will come to know what offense the driver has created and so if the driver is a repeated offender he will be removed or the corrective action will be taken. Today only in newspaper auto and taxi people have send their objection to the Maharashtra government that crores of rupees has been uh, fined to them in way of the each laws. Simply the field officer go click from their mobile phone. We should not be allowed. There should be a standard operating procedure to the field officer. They should be get educated. We have violated with the recent meeting with our chief minister and uh, to our transport minister also. And hopefully some corrective measure will be taken. Friends, just to add to this point, yesterday I was with a transporter who has about 140 trucks. He has employed one person whose job is to every second day go on the Parivahan site to check if there are any chalans pending against his 140 trucks. Let me get Jasveer's take on this. He owns 1,500 trucks. So how is he managing that? And what kind of IT is he using in his business on the whole? See, uh, I understand the uh, pain which Sir is, you know, saying. But technology can really help a lot, OK? So we are using various tools in terms of technology. So my first encounter with the technology when I came into this business was in 2011 with the GPS, which is commonly used, you know, AI tool, which commonly. Then if you, you know, the real technology, then we got this fast tech. Fast tech was a real kind of technology which came into picture. Then demonetization happened and the cash was out from the economy and then those prepaid, you know, route, you know, payment route expenses card. And the digital, this uh, demonetization also pushed the fast tech. Now coming to the you know vehicles technology, we have uh, DMS in our vehicles, so basically driver monitoring system. We have ADAS in our vehicles. Okay, so we are using. Uh, so we we run a tech company also, tech logistics startup called XP India, wherein we are trying to automate the entire supply chain for experience for our customers, entire fleet management experience. So now technology has gone to a different level. So it is now AL you know, ML, AI, blockchain, so this is really happening. Now coming to that uh, toll piece, the, the chalan piece, 
I will agree with the sir that this is not the right way to chalan. But with the help of the technology, so we have API integration with the Wahan, and we get these e chalans on the real time basis. So on a real time basis, we can track our chalan. So API is a very great feature if you integrate with various apps which you know government has. You can do integration with them and you can see all the data at one single platform uh, you know if you adopt the technology way, the way it should be the vehicles you know the latest vehicle euro 6 vehicles they are coming with some fantastic technology a lot of telematics are coming into the picture so uh, you have you you come to know about the vehicle mileage the fuel mileage which used to be a very you know sensitive subject now you can uh, remunerate your drivers according to the so there was a uh, always doubt in your mind that the diesel has been sold by the drivers or the vehicle has consumed the diesel. So now you get the real time, you know, vehicle mileage with the help of the telematics, the vehicle health. You get very preventive, you know, uh, so we have those integrations. We have all these tools with us, wherein we uh, also come to know what is, you know, which part uh, but need to be changed and when so if there are any you know so now the truck is not a machine it's it's a technology basically it's a complete tech you it, it's a sensor based so mo most of the things are sensor based you you get pre alerts on uh, you know if there is some mechanical failure or electronical failure which is going to happen so you come to know that in advance and we have those tools with us so that is really helping us to grow our business so technology is going ways, you know, so it, it just needs that we understand and we go out, you know, from that mindset. It is not a typical transport anymore. It is, it is way beyond that. Shekhar, you would have seen vehicles actually change over the last few years. I mean, especially, I think last seven, eight years, there have been a lot of changes. So going forward, what are the significant changes we can anticipate? Actually, uh no uh, law is perfect, no code is perfect, okay, it's a continuous improvement. Just like from uh, BS0 to BS6, now we are aiming towards BS7, maybe in 2027. So actually it's not a one day job, because everybody, when we take that, uh, I think, a step from BS4 to BS6, it was known to everybody, all stakeholders, they were aware of it. Government will not implement anything immediately because it has to have uh, implications right from uh, vehicle manufacturers, component manufacturers. So now 2027, if the BSC7 uh, is going to come, and till that time you can have alternate uh, fuels also, just like uh, LNG is there, then your hydrogen will be the future because hydrogen can be used for, again, uh, for engines also as well as for the electrical vehicles also. So alternate, uh, even uh, ethanol, 100% ethanol, then mixing of ethanol, flexi fuel. There are many, uh, I can say, uh, discussions going on, and it's in the pipeline. And uh, in the due course of time, it will be definitely implemented. Because previously, when uh, if we go to the, uh, you can say, heavy vehicles uh, segment, even bus, there was no bus code actually. The bus which is uh, fabricated in Maharashtra will not be registered in Andhra. Andhra bus will not be in Karnataka, and. Uh, uh, most uh, problematic uh, issues are the rules, just like what everybody is uh, stating here. If it is a central motor vehicle rule, then state motor vehicle rule should be in line with that. Otherwise, it should not go contradiction to central motor vehicle rules. Because the vehicle which is certified under CMVR, it's a pan-India approval. It's not only state-wise uh, approval. So I think uh, just like uh, sleeper coach, sleeper coach, there was no standard. It is a unique standard. Now it is utilized by six other countries. Because we are following the European norms. And I think that uh, sleeper coach, what we have made a standard. Previously, the sitting, uh, you can say, uh, buses, we are converting into the sleeper coaches. Just like school bus. School bus was, there was no standard. So some of the safety standards we added, identified the bus, city operation, intercity operation, just like trucks also. Even uh, truck also, I think uh, we have got a truck code. So cabin and uh, given the driver safety point of view, there are many features we have added. So it's a continuous improvement. Just like BS4 to BS6, now BS7, there will be more, uh, you can say, uh, technology is coming to the 
ऑटो इंडस्ट्री सो थिंक विघ्नेश वुड स्टार्ट गेटिंग रेडी फॉर बी एस सेवन नाउ बट विट इज फाइल वी गेट देर इज लाइफ अ लिटिल मोर टफ फॉर द डीलर्स नाउ बिकॉज विद सो मेनी मॉडल सो मेनी वेरियंट्स यू हैव टू कीप स्टॉक स्पेशली यू नो इफ यू हैव टू गिव द कस्टमर्स अ ट्रायल रन हाउ डू यू मैनेज दिस इट्स अ होल इको सिस्टम विच प्रॉब्लम नीड्स टू चेंज आई वुड प्रॉब्लम टेक इट फ्रॉम द टू जेंटलमैन सीटिंग या देर अ सेंट्रल मोटर व्हीकल एक्ट विच इज नॉट फॉलोड बाई एनी स्टेट it is cherry picked what they want to follow uh, sta state transport approvals according to cmbr act there is no requirement for it there are certain states which want stas for every foot of a vehicle being different every cc for it being different another issue it goes to is physical verification of vehicles for any uh, temporary registration or permanent registrations there are certain it's not required there are certain states which are requiring that uh we also talked about uh, certain issues uh, wherein you know the trucker is probably one of the most harassed uh, person uh, by taxation point of view and the driver is the most harassed person in the world right i mean yeah our fauji's are there trying to defend our country lot of respects it's a tough job but the trucker goes through us for no uh, apparent uh, adulation or admiration and the, the trucker uh, the driver basically touches all of us you also talked about how oems they backed out of um, giving a fully air conditioned truck this one of the best things a oem should have done i think it's quite perverse when uh, you put ventilation instead of an air conditioning so th- all these things i completely agree on and it's a holistic thing which we need to work towards because for me a customer is a ca- is a person who comes and gives their hard earned money to a dealer uh, not not nothing for free and expects some services to be done today the technology has gone to a level already thank the government uh, and the agencies who come up with the safety codes who come up with the environment codes these are very important these are envi- uh, these are very important uh, investments we are making today for a better future other we are yeah, this heading towards a dark and you know damp cave but yes as certain norms come in we are as dealers along with our oems who help us a lot to prepare for this prepare Uh, in terms of customer education in terms of technician training in terms of tooling in our workshops to make sure that the whole ecosystem is met towards satisfying the customer uh, the technology has gone crazy in terms of how what it delivers telematics it talks about preventive maintenance before a vehicle breaks down right now vehicles don't break down before they break down they are given a uh, limp home mode so these amazing things have come in, in terms of technology in terms of preventive maintenance in terms of safety but i think all of us the state government the central government the oems the truckers uh, with service customers and dealers all have to work towards all of us seem to be pulling in different directions right now so friends while you know we say that india is one country india is actually a con- conglomeration of smaller countries across the whole so maharashtra is a country gujarat is a country tamil nadu is a country and to give you a very strange example here last week a truck met with an accident in th- in th- uh, tamil nadu the transporter was based out of bomb bombay the driver showed him the m parivahan app which had the digi locker it had all the truck documents the tamil nadu officers insisted that we want to see the original rc within 48 hours so the transporter had to send his person by air to Th- to tamil nadu with an rc now imagine the kind of expense the kind of harassment har in the you've been on highways for so long aisi kaun si cheeze highways par kar di chahiye jisse driver ki life easy ho and i'm talking not only in terms of facility but also in terms of treatment to the driver सी ट्रीटमेंट तो मैं बोलूँगी कि जैसे हम लोग नॉर्मली एम्प्लॉय को ऑफिस में हम लोग के हमारे स्टेक होल्डर जो हमें जैसे हमारे डायरेक्टर हमें डील करते हैं वी शूड ट्रीट दैम सेम एज अ एम्प्लॉय हम लोग को उनको वैसे ही रिस्पेक्ट देना चाहिए लाइक हमारे ऑफिस में तो टोटली मना है हम लोग कभी भी ड्राइवर को अब्यूज़ नहीं करते हैं कभी भी उनको लाइक वी आई पर्सनली मोटिवेट दैम लेकिन मैंने हाईवेज पे देखा है कि पुलिस नॉट ओनली पुलिस जिनको हमने लास्ट माइल डिलीवरी देना है वो भी ड्राइवर्स को कॉल करते हैं जबकि हम उनके पास ट्रैकिंग सिस्टम होता है 
तब भी वो ड्राइवर्स को कॉल करते हैं मैं आई वॉज विद डैम लास्ट टाइम जब मैं गुवाहाटी रोड ट्रिप पे थी जो जिनको हमने डिलीवरी करना था वो भी ड्राइवर को कॉल कर रहे हैं ड्राइवर बोल रहा है कि मैं आज शाम तक पहुँच जाऊँगा लेकिन ही एब्यूज दैम एंड बोला कि नहीं नहीं तुम पहले एग्जैक्ट लोकेशन बोलो तो मुझे लगता है कि ये सब चीज़ें पहले तो बेसिक हम लोग को उनको एक ट्रीटमेंट चेंज कर देना चाहिए जो हम लोग उनको अब्यूज़ करके रूडली ये चीज़ें होनी चाहिए एंड सेकंड थिंग मैं अगेन फिर बोलूँगी कि पहले बाकी चीज़ें तो छोड़ दो पहले बेसिक फैसिलिटीज़ तो दे दो पहले बेसिक चीज़ें मिल जाएँ उसके बाद हम लोग बात करेंगे अभी तो बेसिक चीज़ें ही नहीं हैं तो बेसिक फैसिलिटीज़ पहले प्रोवाइड करते हैं उसके बाद हम लोग उसके बाद सोच पाएंगे आगे अभी तो हम लोग बेसिक्स में स्टप हो गए हैं कि हमारे ड्राइवर्स के लिए एटलीस्ट कुछ सोने की जगह हो कुछ खाने की जगह हो नहीं तो मोस्टली ड्राइवर्स अगर हम लोग उनको बोलते हैं कि विद इन दिस टाइम आपको पहुंचना है तो रस्तों में वो लोग रुक ही नहीं पाते कहाँ पे हाइजीनिक फूड ही नहीं है वो लोग रस्तों में रुकते हैं सड़क पे रुकते हैं पेट्रोल पम्प्स पर मोस्टली हमारे लिए पेट्रोल पम्प्स काइंड ऑफ सेवियर क्योंकि ड्राइवर्स वहाँ पर अपना फूड बना खुद से कुक करते हैं फिर जाते हैं तो मुझे लगता है पहले बेसिक चीज़ें दे दो फिर उसके बाद करते हैं हाँ ऑफ कोर्स मैं बोलूंगी कि उनको एक रिस्पेक्ट तो देनी बहुत जरूरी है फ्रेंड्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट वी बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो प्रोवाइडिंग द कंफर्ट्स ऑफ एसी टू ट्रक ड्राइवर्स देर इज अ पर्टिकुलर स्टेट आई विल नॉट नेम नेम दैट स्टेट अ रेगुलर ट्रक इज इम्पोज अ ट्रैक्स ऑफ ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड रुपीज बट इफ द ट्रक हैज एन ए सी द ट्रैक गोज अप टू सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड रुपीज When questioned, they said, अगर आप ड्राइवर को ए सी कम्फर्ट दे सकते हो तो आप हमारे स्टेट को ज़्यादा टैक्स भी दे सकते हो सो दैट इज अ डिटरेंट फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टर्स टू एक्चुअली इन्वेस्ट इन ए सी ट्रक्स जस्ट वी यू हैव ए सी ट्रक्स इज वेल राइट वॉट इज द काइंड ऑफ इज देर एनी परफॉर्मेंस बेनिफिट इन एन ए सी ट्रक वीजा वी एन ऑन ए सी ट्रक सर्टनली देर इज अं एनहांसमेंट इन द एफिशेंसी ऑफ द ड्राइवर वेन so it is also it is as uh, applicable to you and me as it is to the driver so uh, the productivity increases obviously uh, he he is more fresh while driving he feels uh, more equipped he also start believing that also i am also driving a uh, ac truck so my uh, company is kind of showing some kind of care for me so his productivity his uh, the way he behave the way he talks so it is basically it is the upliftment which is happening for the drivers so when you are in ac so then he also start taking care of himself so uh, that is one observation which we have seen we have close to 200 trucks which are ac out of you know the all the trucks but yes uh, it makes hell lot of difference it it changes the way they think they feel respected Uh, sorry and to interrupt you, sir. We have last five minutes, so we'll sum this up and take some questions. Yeah, and to the you know the, the each alan we were talking about, I'll share you a uh, you know incident. The way each alans are happening, our vehicle was present in Guwahati, and the chalan was happening in Maharashtra. Okay. Well, friends, it ID is a real is, time you know ID at the same always. time. So now, whom you go to, you know, you need to go to court. You need, you need to go to various places. this is how uh, you know transporter should not be treated it should be then and there right so friend before i sum up uh, sum up this session let me see if there are any uh, questions from the audience do i see any hands or we can sum it up okay there's one permission for the questions i think you touched upon a very important point in your uh, last uh, uh, last mentions you said that there is a productivity gain for the driver in the comfort uh, situation you know if the cab is ac as a fleet do you also see a productivity gain for you based out of productivity gain that driver performs you know compensating for maybe some fuel economy losses do you see that yeah so by the way So my name is kunal sharma no no so certainly uh, it is a added advantage for us if we are able to run uh, you know 1000 kilometers more in a month so obviously uh, so i'll just give one example typically in india a truck runs 6 to 7000 kilometers 
and there are various fixed costs attached to a vehicle. Let's take an example of a multi axle vehicle. So fixed costs are around 1,50,000 rupees uh, approximately. So now when you divide that 1,50,000 to 6,000 kilometer, it comes to 25 rupees per kilometer, you know, you know, per kilometer. At the same time, we, we, we are an express trucking company, so we run our trucks 15,000 kilometers, and those comforts basically enable us to run our trucks 15, 18, 20,000 kilometers. Our Volvo vehicles run 25,000 kilometers in a month. So now when you divide that 150,000 cost to 25,000 know, kilometers, so it becomes reverse. Your fixed cost come down to six rupees per kilometer instead of you know, 25 rupees kilometer. So there's a 19 rupees per kilometer difference which you are making. So obviously where it is going, it is coming to us, it is going to you know, our drivers, it is going to you know, for their betterment, for our people betterment. So certainly it helps a lot. Thank you very much because that's and, a very uh, important point everybody should note. And Jaspi, does that also bring down the freight rates the, to the customers? So it is, it is quite obvious. If, you know, I eat that 19 rupees per kilometer, if I remove that 19 rupees kilometers, so see, you, you talk about national, you know, logistics policy, NLP. So how can we bring down this cost? So if we are able to run our vehicle more, if we are, you know, able to give that conducive environment, if you are able to create that ecosystem where loading, unloading, running, express, double drivers, you know, so we need to bring drivers on board, we need to bring customers on board, because customers treat your vehicles like, you know, warehouses. It's, it's a running warehouses for them. For, they, they just give 1,000 rupees and they own the truck for four days, two days, three days. And you know the pro productivity loss? What the day when we will be able to run our trucks 21 to 22 days in a month, when we'll be able to run our trucks 15, 16,000 kilometers in a month, so China is running 30,000 kilometers in a month. Why can't we run with, you know, Gadkari is, you know, they, they, he's making such a great infra. We have good roads. If, you know, this RTO, police, these uh, things are removed. And I believe if the government wants, they can remove it in one single day. It's because everything is online, be it, you know, DL, everything is on Mahan. So why do we need these hurdles all the way? We can easily travel 1,000 kilometers a day with a two-driver system in 24 hours. If, you know, eight hours running, 16 hours average of, you know, 50 kilometers. So you can easily run 800 to 1,000 kilometers in all given conditions. Right. So, Perfect. So, friends, in the morning session also, I picked up this question that we have to start increasing the number of kilometers that a truck runs every month. So we have quality roads now. We have the best quality of trucks now. And going forward, I think it is not very far when we will actually get there. So the national logistics policy and some regulations will help the road transport industry get better, get efficient. We only hope that the hurdles on road get away. And with that, we'll also remove the hurdles of this panel for now. You were a wonderful audience. Thank you very much. <laughs>